my kids are taking their GCSEs at the moment. I have twins who are 16. And they're off doing uh, their maths GCSE this morning. And then one of them's got a design and technology uh, exam this afternoon. Uh, and I guess partly because of these things, there's a certain amount of low-grade worrying going on in the house. I'm trying to get them to revise, and they are doing a bit. But there's always a sense they could be doing more, and uh, as I say, it, it leads to a small amount of worry. I say a small amount because uh, my kids don't worry that much, and I don't really worry that much. But it's a funny thing, worrying. I was just thinking about that this morning. Uh, I get this feeling, I don't know if it's as accurate or not, but I sometimes think that worrying is a kind of archaic response to difficult circumstances, which in many cases um, are inappropriate. Uh, certainly some of the symptoms of worrying, when I, do, when I have worried, or when I do worry still occasionally, it's always about a kind of um, focusing on the details of the situation you're in right now. It's always this feeling of, of um, kind of being frozen. It's always this feeling of um, kind of being overwhelmed, if you like. So it feels like lots of things are happening at once. Um, it's the feeling that you have no control over the future. Or you don't really have any access to to, uh, to making plans about what might happen in the future. Uh, and there's various you know, sort of physical and visceral things going on as well in terms of you know raised heart rate, sweating possibly, those kind of responses. And it seems to me that all those responses don't really, or shouldn't really, form part of the kind of vis uh, physical vocabulary of a of a being with the kind of consciousness or awareness that we have. Those seem more appropriate responses for a creature with no recourse to the kind of faculties that consciousness and awareness provides. Now, if I'm a deer in a field, and there is the possibility of lions or cheetahs around, it makes a great deal of sense for me to be hyper-vigilant, to be focusing on what's happening at that moment, to, um, uh, to be kind of ready to stop and freeze, physically freeze at any moment. To have a, a, a kind of um, cardiovascular system that's really ready to start pumping at any moment and just release this flow of adrenaline very quickly. Uh, because without recourse to consciousness, those are the kind of responses which you would need and which would save your life in that situation. We very rarely find ourselves in that situation, really. In fact, I don't remember ever finding myself in that situation. Uh, most of the time, if we can't think our way out of a situation by just imagining possible futures and then inhabiting the most appropriate one, or talking to someone, or asking for help, or um, you know, getting involved in some kind of rational, creative process, of, um, you know, of, of trying to create a kind of subjunctive reality which is different to the one that you're in right now. Um, and we, do have the, we do have the ability to do those things. So it's, uh, it feels like a bit of an anachronism sometimes that we don't always do those perfectly rational things. We, uh, we just let our limbic system take over but our frontal lobes be completely hijacked by that limbic system and behave like startled deer in the headlights.